Hi guys, in this video I'll be attempting the 12 coloured pencil challenge. So as the name suggests, I'll only be using 12 colours to complete a picture, and for this piece I'll only be using the colours that are available in the 12 set of polychromos. I've seen lots of other artists try this challenge, but I'm not sure who the first person was who came up with the idea, and it's not always framed as a challenge either, as many people own just 12 colours when starting out, or if they can't afford larger sets, but I'll get into that later on in the video. I'll list the 12 colours I'm using down below in the description box if you'd also like to give this challenge a go. You may see some more pencils appear throughout the piece, but I assure you that they are just duplicates of the 12 colours I have to use. Some of my pencils are getting a little short and stubby after lots of love and use, and they're just too short to fit into my crank sharpener, so I have to use my replacement pencils for the areas that I want to use a really sharp pencil on. As you can see, I have a kingfisher drawn out on my paper. If you're a long-time subscriber, you'll remember around this time last year, I drew a kingfisher in a cheap art supply challenge using coloured pencils that cost around $2. If you haven't watched that video, I'll leave it in the cards in the top right and in the description box down below so you can check it out later on, and you must let me know what you think of both pieces. In that video, I believe I said something about wanting to compare those cheap pencils with artist grade ones, so here I am, better late than never. So I'm starting out by drawing the background. I wanted to try and get a bokeh feel for this piece, so I start off by going around the background using my circle stencil to map in lots of circles in order to build up that out of focus feel. I began by using the white first, which you can't really see very well on the white paper, but my idea was that by laying down the white first, I'd create a bit of a resist with the following layers, so I'd maintain some of that paleness in the circles. After all, with bokeh, you want the circles to remain brighter than the main colour of the background. So once I've got some white circles in, I start adding in more circles of different colours, and I create coverage by glazing in colours in larger areas. Here I used the greens, a bit of the burnt ochre and the cadmium yellow, and some of the light ultramarine, and after I had what I thought was enough pigment down, I started using my liquid solvents, which in this case is the Zest It pencil blend to try and spread out my colours, which didn't work very well and I got a very grainy and gritty look. As it turns out, I didn't have nearly enough pigment on the paper as I should have done. I'm used to using Derwent drawing pencils for my initial layers, and this amount of pencil on the paper would have given me relatively even coverage, but polychromos don't quite seem to have the same level of pigmentation and covering power that the Derwent drawing pencils do. So I have to go over these layers again with more coloured pencil to try and get enough pigment on the paper so that I can spread things around to create a smooth initial layer. I like to start with a background first, as I find it's easier to get even coverage this way. If I started the other way around with the subject matter first, I'd have to try and avoid colouring and blending over the edges of the subject matter, which makes it difficult to get even coverage on the background. I also find that I stay focused for it longer if I start with the background first, as I have the more exciting subject matter to look forward to completing. If I were to do it the other way around, I'd end up getting impatient and rush the background just to be finished with the entire drawing. Before starting, I had made a swatch grid of the colours I could create with just these 12 pencils. Each colour had a row and a column each, and where the rows and columns intersected, a mixed colour would form. If you'd like to see this chart, I'll leave a link to my blog post about this video in the description box down below. Additionally, before I began, I had also made some thumbnail sketches of the background in a sketchbook, where I had tried out a small variety of different hues and saturations to match the Kingfisher well. I really wanted to go for a muted and subdued background, with a variety of pale green tones, but unfortunately, in order to get smooth coverage, I was forced to lay down a lot of coloured pencil, and because of that, the background became a lot darker and more saturated than I would have liked. I'm thinking that at a later date, I'll do another Kingfisher with the background that I had initially envisioned for this piece. 
When I usually do bokeh backgrounds on pastel mat, I like to blend everything dry, so I'll just use a paper blending stump or tortillon, and allow the different colours I have in my pencil collection to do most of the work for me. Here of course I was very limited with my coloured pencil choices, so I wasn't able to layer similar colours to get those smooth transitions, and instead I had to rely on my liquid solvents to try and get smooth blends, and this is how my colours got really muddy. All of the pigments mixed together to form a dull, creamy brownish green colour, and I have a feeling that I would have gotten a more luminous and pretty colour if I hadn't used any white in my initial layers, but hindsight is 2020, and I had to find a solution to my problem. So after my blended layer had dried, I went in with more coloured pencil, this time trying to cover up my muddy mess. But I was starting to get a grainy, gritty look again as I was putting more and more pigment down, and I had begun to burnish and polish the peaks of the paper's tooth, whilst the values could still accept more pigment. I ended up using brush and pencil's touch-up texture a few times on the background to regain some tooth, so more pencil would stick and I could layer further, and that also helped to fix and isolate the layers below, so I could blend and mix purer colours without being affected by that muddy base layer below. Whilst working on the background, I also blocked in the branches, which I created by mixing lots of colours into the brown, to create a bit of variation and to hopefully make things look a bit more natural. But after a while of working on the background, I had had enough and wanted to start on the Kingfisher. Again, I made the mistake of not putting enough pigment down to begin with. I also used a lot of white and I overmixed to create very dull looking colours again. The more I blended and mixed, the harder it was to get contrast and detail, and at this point I honestly felt like throwing in the towel and starting on a new drawing, something that was less challenging and a bit more enjoyable. I still felt like things were salvageable, and it would have been a waste of my time and materials that I'd already used if I were to give up so easily. It's okay that not everything goes to plan, in fact, things often don't go to plan, but just some things are more easily correctable than others. My solution was to use the touch-up texture again to separate the base layers from my future ones, so I could get fine detail and bright colours. Another plan I had was to leave the crisp detail for last, and just try to focus on getting the hue and value right to begin with. To try and imitate the brighter spots on the top of the kingfisher's head and on the wings, I put down a lot of white and I blended in a bit of blue, and then I used more of the touch-up texture to protect that brightness, so that these details wouldn't get blended over. Some of you may recall the Colorsoft review video I made a little earlier on in the year, and that was also a 12 colour challenge of sorts. I definitely found this Kingfisher piece more difficult than the frog I drew with Colorsoft though. I think that's partly because of how translucent the polychromos are, and Colorsoft, on the other hand, are really waxy and opaque, making it easy by comparison to get bright colours to lay on top of the darker ones. The Colorsoft white is very pigmented and opaque, whereas the Polychromos white does very little when layered over the top of darker colours. I also think that the Kingfisher with the background was very ambitious. Overall, the piece is quite detailed compared to the frog that I drew with the Colorsoft, and required a lot more layering to achieve the colours I wanted. Additionally, I think that my regular technique was giving me some issues and holding me up. I'm quite impatient as far as coloured pencil artists go. I like to try and get lots of value in my base layers, and I'm incredibly messy with those base layers, and then I build up detail on top and try and tidy up the piece. This method of working is reliant on having a larger selection of colours, and some waxier and more opaque pencils to help layer and add fine detail. The translucency of polychromos meant that I was unable to easily regain that bright white, and also made it difficult to hide over my messy base layers. That being said, I think that my artwork is evidence that you can render something realistically with just a small set of pencils, although it certainly takes a lot more time in order to blend the colours you want. I reckon though that if you want to try out a set of coloured pencils without having a collection already, 
I'd recommend at least the 24 set of polychromos, preferably the 36 set, in order to give you a less frustrating and more representative introduction to the medium. But comparing this piece to the Kingfisher I made with the pencils in the Cheap Art Supply Challenge, I don't think there is a comparison really. This piece was a challenge no doubt, but I certainly struggled more with the cheap pencils. Those were really hard and scratchy and had little pigment when compared to these artist grade ones. Unlike the polychromos, they made my fingers ache so badly that I only spent two hours on this piece, whereas I easily spent more than six hours on this one. Towards the end of this piece, I tried to balance out the background again and tidy everything up, but I couldn't help but feel like I was playing whack-a-mole. When I managed to overcome one problem, another one seemed to appear. So the background wasn't as smooth or bokeh as I would have liked, but it was good enough. I decided that this piece is finished and not perfect, is not one of my favourite pieces, but I'm proud that I stuck through it and still gave it a good shot. So here's the finished piece, let me know if you've tried this challenge, and if you have, tag me on my social media as I'd love to see what you've created. Thank you very much for watching, hope you found this video interesting, leave it a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with my latest arty videos. Hope you have a lovely week, and I'll see you in the next video.